Hi guys, I'm Audrey and I post videos every week on how we can improve our overall wellness, well-being, connection, purpose, and security, and the occasional K-pop content. It's almost the end of the first month of the year and I thought I'd share with you today what I've been up to with regards to my physical health. Since we just came from the holidays and you know how it is during this season, all you can think about is food. Like one moment it's Christmas time and then you eat your Noche Buena and then after a few days it's New Year! Woo! Yay! And then you will eat your Medja Noche. So I am here to say that you are not alone. I am also a victim of this holiday season. <laughs> and actually during this season, my weight averaged at around 48.5 kilograms. It's low, yes, compared to my maximum weight, but my percentage body fat was around 26.5%. Like, OMG, I was full of fat. <laughs> For reference, my lowest PBF, based on the weighing scale that I'm using today, was 23.4%. So you can see the gap there, right? That's 3% of fat in my body. So, yeah. And just like everybody else, the new year brings about hope, excitement, and motivation in me. So I made my New Year's resolution. I was so pumped up like, yeah, let's get it, let's do it. This is gonna be my year. Let's go, go, go. Hey, woo, like that. <laughs> so first week of January, I was at 48.6 kilograms, 26.6% PDF. So for my food, I actually ordered from a meal planning service where they deliver your food for the day based on the kind of diet that you want and how many calories you would like to intake. So they have balanced diet, high protein, pescatarian diet, and other diets as well. I ordered the 1,200 calories balanced diet for two weeks. And then for my exercise, I was following the 21-day tone challenge by Bloggy Lattes. It was good actually. During the first week, I was exercising immediately after waking up. I was eating the food from the meal planning service and I wasn't eating any extra food aside from my whey protein. And my weight was going down. My PBF was going down a little bit. So it's really great. Although I was feeling tired at times, yes, I was progressing towards my goal of losing those holiday gains. But come second week of January, I don't know what happened exactly, but Monday, January 11, I exercised, I ate my food for the day, but I didn't sleep at the time I usually slept, which was around 10.30 p.m. So the next day, I was too tired when my alarm went off at 5.30 a.m. I was feeling groggy, so I went back to sleep again. But basically, from this day, Tuesday onwards, I started feeling hungrier. And okay, so I wanted to listen to my body, so I was eating extra food aside from the meal planning service food. So I was sure I was eating beyond 1,200 calories a day. So you can imagine how this went. My weight started going up again. Like one day, it was around 49.5 kilograms. Like, oh my god, almost line of five again. So, oh my god, God, it's crazy right like I was planning to lose weight and I was so pumped up the previous week but suddenly I gained more than what I lost so oops so for reference this is a graph showing the exact measurements I got from the two weeks so as you can see it was going down the first week but then it went back up again during the second week so I was wondering don't I have the willpower to do this am I a failure joke <laughs> So I was wondering, is there a scientific explanation why reducing calorie intake didn't work for me? And then, I remember reading a book last year, it's called The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung, or Fung, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but yeah, it's written by him. And actually, I wasn't able to finish that book yet, but I remember him talking something about calorie reduction and its effect. So I reread that part, and I found out something interesting. So first, before I tahal about calorie reduction camer loot we need to understand first how we process food so first let us define a calorie I've been saying it a while ago I ordered 1200 calorie diet plan but what is a calorie so it's basically a unit of energy so all the food we eat contains calories and as you may know there's carbohydrates proteins and fats they provide energy to our body once we consume them, but they differ in metabolic processing, meaning how they are converted from energy to food. We assume that weight loss can be predicted by the equation calories in minus calories out equals body fat. But this equation assumes that calories in and calories out are independent of each other, which is wrong. So, what exactly happens when we reduce our calorie intake? So, there are two major adaptations our body does. First, 
reduction in total energy expenditure. So let's say for example, I eat extra 200 calories today. So my body will be the one to decide how it will use that 200 extra calories. So it can be used to regulate my body temperature, it can be used to increase my heart rate for breathing, or it can be stored as fat. The energy expenditure of our body is controlled automatically, and the only factor that we can control consciously is exercise. So because these processes are impossible to measure as a human being, we assume that it remains stable. So calories out is assumed to remain stable over time. But some historic experiments have shown that a reduction in calories in triggers a similar reduction in calories out, which means that no weight was lost because our body balances its energy budget. So one extreme experiment to show this effect is the Minnesota starvation experiment in 1944. So prior to the study, 36 young men were consuming 3,200 calories a day. Then for a period of 6 months, they were under a semi-starvation diet for around 1,500 calories. Anyway, what do you think will be the body's reaction from this calorie intake reduction? Of course, all functions also experience a reduction in energy expenditure, which aligns with what the men from the study experienced. The most common feeling was cold even during summer, so their body temperature dropped. Why? Because calories are needed to regulate the temperature in our body. They were also extremely tired and dizzy. Why? Because calories are needed for brain function. Their physical endurance dropped by half. Why? Calories are needed to move the body. So you can see from here that our body is really smart. Like it does what it needs to do to keep us alive. So if it didn't reduce the energy expenditure and kept using 3,000 calories a day, while the energy intake is only 1,500 calories, the fat stores will be burned, the protein stores will be burned, and then eventually you will die. So we don't want that to happen, right? And this is what our bodies exactly do. So now we can say that calorie in and calorie out are highly dependent variables. So aside from the reduction in the body's total energy expenditure, there is also another major adaptation of our body to caloric reduction. And that is the hormonal signals that stimulate hunger increase. There was a study back in 2011 about hormonal adaptations to weight loss. Basically, the participants were given 500 calories a day, like what? How are they alive? And some hormonal levels were analyzed. One of those was ghrelin, which is basically the hormone that makes us feel hungry. And they found out that weight loss increased ghrelin levels in the participants of the study. And this change, according to the book, occurs almost immediately and persists almost indefinitely. So so with this knowledge about those two major adaptations, I can say that what happened to me was perfectly normal. I suddenly decreased my calorie intake. Therefore, my body reduced my energy expenditure to conserve the calories that I was taking in. So this explains why I was feeling tired at times. And because of weight loss during the first week, the hormonal hunger signaling was amplified, which explains why I was hungrier during the second week. So it's not because I am a failure or I don't have the willpower to do it, it's just my body's response to what I was doing with it. So if you also experienced the same thing while you tried going on a diet, I hope this video helped you understand how our body responds to it. And disclaimer, I'm not a doctor or an expert or anything, I'm just sharing the knowledge that I learned from the book. And since I mentioned a while ago that I haven't finished reading it yet. Maybe I'll share on another video what is the book solution if we are not supposed to do caloric reduction. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you want more content on how we can improve our overall wellness. That's it. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.